One bright spot for the beleaguered casino capital, that tops tonight's Garden State Express. Our first stop, Atlantic City, where Stockton University may plant a satellite campus after all. The Economic Development Authority has approved more than $68 million in tax credits to redevelop empty acreage at the South End. On it would rise a new five-story dormitory for 500 students, a 56,000-square-foot academic building with retail space across the street, and a seven-story parking garage, too, and even a shuttle bus to ferry students to and from its Galloway campus. Next to Jersey City, where the construction will be skyward, a real estate trade publication is reporting China Overseas America has on its drawing board a plan to build a 950-foot tall tower, its 95 stories housing 760 condo units and 18,000 square feet of commercial and retail space. It would become the state's tallest building and rival the glittering glass-sheathed Gotham across the Hudson. The Federal Aviation Administration has cleared the project, concluding the tower won't obstruct navigable airspace. Once the City Council and Planning Board approve, it'll be added to the 3,000 other residential units scheduled to break ground this year. Another 3,000 are already set to open. Finally, Robbinsville, where the giant Amazon Fulfillment Center says it will contest $7,000 in citations for alleged workplace safety violations. The Occupational Safety and Health Administration says Amazon failed to report 26 injuries from a bump on the head to shoulder pain to strain from standing too long or lifting too much and says the on-site medical staff, though all licensed DMTs, are providing medical care beyond what's allowed by their certification. Even OSHA admits the record-keeping violations are not serious, but writing them down could help uncover a pattern of conditions with the potential of putting workers at risk. And that's our Garden State Express for Wednesday, January 13th. Something up in your town? Tip us off. President Obama's final State of the Union address did not contain the usual legislative laundry list of goals he'd like accomplished. Those have a tough time gaining traction in an election year. But he did urge this, quote, clear-eyed, big-hearted, optimistic nation to reject the politics of tribalism and fear that seem a subtext of the presidential campaign. David Cruz breaks it down for us. So what did he say? Well, Mary Alice, the, the president seemed really um, concerned about the tone that seems to be out there. And he really wanted to counter this notion that the nation is somehow in decline, either economically or militarily. On those two points, he was very emphatic. The United States of America right now has the strongest, most durable economy in the world. We're in the middle of the longest streak of private sector job creation in history. Anyone claiming that America's economy is in decline is peddling fiction. Let me, let me tell you something. The United States of America is the most powerful nation on earth, period. Period. It's not even close. He also seemed acutely aware of the rhetoric coming from the opposition party, right? Yeah, it wasn't supposed to be a political speech right. per se, but he uh, was listening to a lot of the stuff that is going on out there, especially in the Republican side, and made some pointed references to, to Chris Christie and Ted Cruz and, of course, Donald Trump. As we focus on destroying ISIL, over-the-top claims that this is World War III just play into their hands. The world will look to us to help solve these problems. And our answer needs to be more than tough talk or calls to carpet bomb civilians. That may work as a TV soundbite, but it doesn't pass muster on the world stage. This is not a matter of political correctness. 
When politicians insult Muslims, whether abroad or our fellow citizens, when a mosque is vandalized or a kid is called names, that doesn't make us safer. That's not telling it what, telling it like it is. It's just wrong. Telling it like it is a shot at Christie. What's your takeaway? Yeah, totally. My my takeaway, uh, aside from all of that, was this uh, sense that the the uh, president wants Americans to up their citizenship game. He said, in fact, uh, I want to quote him. He said, um, "It's not enough to change a congressman or a senator or a president. We have to change the system to reflect our better selves." So, our public life withers when only the most extreme voices get all the attention. And most of all, democracy breaks down when the average person feels their voice doesn't matter, that the system is rigged in favor of the rich or the powerful or some special interest. Too many Americans feel that way right now. So a powerful speech uh, from the orator in chief but how much uh, lasting impact it's going to have in this political year, probably not so much. It was at the very end of the State of the Union that he said, this is what I'm sorry I did not accomplish. And that was the citizen, citizenship piece of it. Yeah, he, he said that he was uh, sorry that the, the divisions and, and the rhetoric uh, did not get any better. Uh, and that he regretted that he, he hearkened back to Lincoln. He said maybe someone like Lincoln would have been able to fix that. But it was one of the things that he said that he was uh, sad about. And you don't usually hear a president say something like that. David Cruz, thanks. All right, Mary Alice.